Good Lord YouTube, what's going on? It's your boy Mike here, and you know, this is my channel, Solid State Alchemy. I'm in my basement. Um, I'm in the underbelly of the YouTube algorithm, and uh, we're going to talk about computer cases again. You guys seem to like that. Uh, I'm all about making content that people want, can use, um, make sense for them to watch and consume, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about um, my personal uh, favorite budget ATX computer case, right? And that is the Zalman S2 ATX mid tower computer case. Retails for right around 50 bucks, give or take. Um, sometimes you can get it for less, sometimes it retails for considerably more. It just kind of depends on, you know, your timing. I did get this particular case for exactly, you know, $49.99 plus tax. Um, shipping was included. I think I bought this off of Amazon. Um, sometimes, you know, Newegg has them, sometimes they don't. Sometimes Am Amazon has them instead. Occasionally you'll find it on eBay. Um, I would shoot to get this case for $50 or less. I definitely would not pay more than $50. Zalman is a company with, you know, a checkered past, let's say. Um, I'm sure Zalman would rather that I didn't, but I will leave a link in the video description um, to the video uh, that Gamers Nexus did about Zalman's uh, CPU coolers and their history. Um, I've got a Zalman CPU cooler somewhere around here sitting on an i5 2500K. Seems to work just fine. Uh, it's one of the old school radial fan looking deal ones. Pretty, you know, it's interesting aesthetically. Um, and this case is also interesting aesthetically. I like it. Um, let's get it unboxed and take a look here. And we'll just go through the basics. And then uh, I'll take a break uh, and build a PC in this off camera. Um, and we'll see how it looks. But let's go ahead and just take a look at you know the way it comes out of the box here. Um, if I can get the cardboard tabs to slide past the fire foam. There it goes. All right. Am I still in the frame? Oh, let's um, let's move me up just a little bit here. Okay. Well, now the now the case is not in the frame. I will fix it. I will fix it. Um. Let's see. So. I will, my face is not going to be in frame, but I am not the star of the show here. The PC case is, so let's just keep it there. All right. While I'm standing, I'll sit back down and you guys can see my, my lovely mug. All right. So, you know, very basic cardboard and styrofoam packaging. You know, this is not something that you're, you know, this is not like what comes in, um, a Fantex, you know, Enthu case. Like that comes with some really nice packaging. This is just super, super cheap styrofoam, uh, plastic, you know, wrap. Um, yeah, so let's take a look here. So I think the best thing about this case, in, in, in my opinion, is the, fa the front fascia. I just like it. I like the way it looks. I like this kind of um, just this, this great this vertical grill on the front of the case. I just think it's very sleek and modern and, you know, minimalist in, in the correct use of the term, unlike um, Dennis from Linus Tech Tips, who doesn't evidently know what that word means. Um, I'm sure he really does know what that word means, but he just applies it incorrectly. So let's get the side panel off. Here. Now the side panel is, um, I think, very slightly smoked. It's not um, perfectly clear like uh, the Montec Flyer was. Montec Flyer and this case um, are in basically the same price bracket, right around 50 bucks. I definitely don't recommend you spend more than $50 on either of these cases unless you just really, really, really need it. Um, yeah, so slightly smoked, you know, not super, super dark. I've had um, uh, 
I've had some cheap cases, DIY, DIY PC, their, you know, clear side panels are like black. I mean, the, it's, yeah, it's dark and it's very hard to see what's going on inside. You know, once you put, if you put, you know, anything that's RGB in there, you know, you're losing a, con a considerable amount of brightness on your RGBs when you um, put them in there. Okay, so what do we got in here? We got the user's manual, Zalman S2. Um, gives you like a little bit of an overview. Yeah, it's fairly, you know, decent uh, pictures and, you know, how you put individual things in. So here's something. Let's check it out because this has been a, a, an emerging trend in super cheap cases is does it come with a hard drive sled? It's pictured here. Um, separate the 2.5 and 3.5 combo hard drive guide and assemble the hard drive and SSD and mount the hard drive on the slot. So is that in here? It's not in the front with all the goodies that come in the bag. So thumb screws. <laughs> Once again, over tighten the thumb, screw, thumb screws that you actually need a screwdriver to get off. That just seems to be, you know, cheap case purgatory. That's where we're at. You're never going to get these screws off with just your thumbs unless you're a freaking He-Man. All right. Get the side panel off. Yes. Ha ha. Oh, crap. Boom. Got they call this a combo. So it's you know it's got the four screw mounts for an SSD, or you can put a two and a half or a three and a half inch um, hard drive in the tray. You get two of those, so you've got you know uh, inboard mounting for um, either two three and a halves or two two and a half inch uh, hard drives, and then another two and a half inch SSD mount here, another one here. Um, so, and another one here, if you're using, if you're using a micro ATX, or not micro ATX, um, micro ITX form factor motherboard, no, no, it's just on one side. So here, here, two in there, um, doesn't look like they gave you the option to mount another, um, hard drive along the bottom, but you do have two fan mounts here on the um, the basement for the power supply, which is nice. Um, this it's <clears throat> It's got uh, a mesh here, which is not filtered. <laughs> kind of weird that it's not filtered all the way up here. If you put fans here, you're definitely in the and they're intake fans blowing, you know, drawing air from through the bottom of the case. Um, and through the front panel, they're definitely going to draw air through here, um, which and that's what how I would recommend you put your fans here is that they be intakes and draw air from under the chassis up into um, the uh, the main compartment here. So that's a little bit of a of a downfall. The case comes with two uh, 120 millimeter Zalman fans in front and one. Uh, this is also a 120 millimeter fan in the back as exhaust. Um, it does have a magnetic filter on top and there is space for uh, two more fans, um, but there's no front radiator mount support or top, top radiator mount support. You just literally are not going to get um, a, top, a top mount radiator in. Um, into this case. I don't even know if you could really, you know, you're going to need a thin 240, honestly, to get it in here. Um, or, or, yeah, uh, a one with a very low, pro, with low profile tanks at the top. So these, these wires and the, the PCB for the, for the top IO, the front IO, I guess you could call it, are definitely going to interfere with um, radiator placement. Now, now, I do not, I never recommend water cooling, even AIO water cooling in budget cases. They're usually just the support um, for it is minimal and usually poorly executed. So I definitely say that this is an is an air cooling case only. It has 
you know, because of this very, very large surface area, um, uh, front fascia, let's get this off too so we can take a look at what's in there, um, you get a lot of front airflow. You've got good bottom airflow. You've got good pads for top airflow. This is a very airflow focused case, but it just will not, it just doesn't have the physical dimensions to do, um, to do water cooling very well. Now, you can see you've got two front mount fans here. You could, you can definitely, you, you can try to get a 240 mil uh, AIO in here. Um, you know, hopefully you're gonna be able to get your cables down to the bottom and hopefully the tanks don't interfere too terribly much with this, but it's gonna be tight. Um, you can try to slide the 240 down here, but then, well, yeah, there's there's really no way because this is going to interfere with your tubes going down. And if you put the 240 mil down here, then the pump is more than likely going to be the, at the top portion of your loop. And uh, that's a pump killer, right? You're going to get air to the pump. And like I said, there is zero clearance for um, a radiator in the top mount position. You just can't do it. The only, uh, yeah, I, yeah. The only option is putting a radiator here and that's going to be tight because of the way the IO and the IO PCB is laid out. So again, this is a, an extremely good airflow case. Um, this mesh behind here is fine, but not too fine. I definitely, you definitely do get airflow. If you upgraded these fans to, um, like some Noctua Chromaxes or, or, uh, or the Redux 125s, it will be quiet and have extremely good airflow. Throw a couple of extra fans in here and brute force it if you need to. Um, you'll, you will up the noise floor a little bit, but it won't be too terrible. Okay, so that's basically an overview of, of the case itself. Um, you know, it's pretty simple. There's no built-in RGB. You know, there's no controller, you know, for RGB. There's nothing weird to wire up. You've just got two fans in the front. You've got your standard, um, you got your standard front I.O. here, um, power, mic and uh, headphone, um, mic, mic and headphone. You've got your power light. You've got your hard disk activity light. Um, your reset and power switches and uh, USB 2.0 times 2 and you, one USB 3.0. All the cabling is extremely, extremely standard. There's no, there's no mystery here. This is just a basic up front, well constructed. There's very little chassis flex um, in this, but it is light. This is not a, this is not a chunk of a case because it has so much cutouts for, um, for airflow. Uh, I think it's you know it's understated. It's minimalist um, in all the right senses of the word. I think Zalman did a has made a very good case here um, for the for the money. Fifty dollars for this case is primo. I like it. So I'm going to get busy uh, off camera, put a system in this, and uh, we'll see how we did. All right. So I got a system in my Zalman S2 here. So how do we do? Um, pretty good. You know, uh, it'd been a little bit since I had built a PC in this case. Um, like I said, oops, didn't get that snapped all the way, there we go. Like I said, um, you know, occasionally they do uh, go fluctuate up pretty high in price, like almost a 70 bucks or so, and um, I don't buy them at that price. I just don't feel like they're a good value. But at 50 and below, um, I do, and I snagged this one up when it was at $50 on Amazon, but it had been a while. So there were some things in, in the initial intro that I didn't mention that I'm going to circle back around to now. Um, one of them is, okay, so this is like a modern fascia on what is probably a fairly old or reused chassis design. They deleted the hard drive cages up here and, you know, uh, and put a fascia that runs top to bottom. So they, they did some updates to modernize it because most people don't have uh, CD-ROMs, you know, poking out the front anymore. But one thing they didn't modernize or haven't optimized anyway is the placement of the motherboard um, power cable, the 8-pin EPS cable that comes through 
and connects to the 8-pin EPS there. It's tight and it's annoying and it pushes the motherboard around and you have to get you know you have to kind of like manhandle it uh, to get it in there and get your uh, motherboard down on your standoffs. Three of the uh, so this is a full ATX size case and I'm using a full ATX motherboard, but the three of the standoffs were not pre-installed. That's neither here nor there. I mean, I don't mind doing that, but it could be a little bit um, daunting for a first-time PC builder having to put the standoffs in because these are cheap standoffs in cheap metal, and you can strip it out super easy, so super light touch there. Um, some other things that let you know that you're dealing with a budget case is the... Um, the PCIe panel on the back here, there's only one um, cutout that is actually like made removable. The rest of them are pre are um, you know tab co tab connected and you just bend bend them until they pop off and then they're garbage, right? You can't reinstall them. Now they do give you two replacement ones. <clears throat> um, I don't understand why they just don't pre-install all three of those. If it's a time thing at the at the factory and they're just trying to pump them out as fast as they can, they install one. The rest are press fit. If you move stuff around, you've got stuff. You've got these um, to placeholders to cover up any gaps. But what I don't like about it is, and you can see right, um, these are perforated and they've got a pretty good um, you know matrix of holes there to let air out the back of the case, but the standoffs, I already threw mine away, I don't know if you can see, they're nearly solid. The ones that, not standoffs, but the the, the, the ones that are pressed uh, and tabbed to break off, uh, for, there's a term for that, I don't, I don't remember what it is, but anyway, um, those are uh, nearly solid all the way through. They have three small holes in them, so it doesn't allow any hot air to escape the, um, the PC out the back if you have cross cross flow from your front fans from front to back that is like one minor design issue right um, I prefer you know a nicer case you'll get these pre-installed all the way across the back or at least on the first several um, other than that I did some fiddling around with 240 AIOs I had I had one laying around and I wanted to see if I could get it to fit anywhere um, and it's gonna come down if you can the, your ability to fit a 240 rad and fans in this top position is gonna come down to the height off of the the plane off of you know the height from this from your motherboard tray into the compartment of your um, your heat sinks, your VRM heat sinks on your motherboard. This MSI has heat sinks that are mm, a millimeter, probably, uh, maybe even a little bit less. Although they would probably be touching or might have a little bit of interference if they were less than a millimeter shorter. But if these were a millimeter shorter, I could, in fact, get a 240 AIO because the AIO mounting is offset towards the front or the you know this side of the case um, the top or you know this side panel it's it's you know you know what I'm saying the thing so <laughs> you could get a 240 in the top if and only if your heat sinks are short enough for clearance um, for your fans that is it. Heat sinks and your RAM. Heat sinks and your RAM have to be short enough for clearance for your fans. So if you've got tall RAM um, heat sinks, RAM fins or whatnot on your DIMMs, or you have tall um, VRM heat sinks, it's a no-go on the top front. The uh, the front it is super close. Um, your you're going to need a slim rad, um, and you're, what's going to have to happen is you're going to have to separate the fans of your AIO from the radiator, and you're going to have to sandwich it so that your fans are. Let me see if I can get this off of here without standing up. So you're going to have to sandwich your AIO assembly so that the AIO fans are here, 
and the rad is on the inside and it's just a push through um, setup, right? Because the fans on the inside are going to deconflict with, of course, the thickest, stupidest wire in all of front I.O. and that is the USB 3.0 wire it's just always thick and ornery and in the way so that is an issue you you but you can get a 240 AIO in the front and you know if you've got the room for your um, for your AIO tubes to come and be at the bottom that's even better because that puts the top tanks above your pump assembly there that's usually integrated into your block housing and that's all good. Um, the other drawback of this case that I found, and I'm not going to open it up and let you see the terror that is lurking behind that motherboard, but it's pretty terrible. Um, basically, you know, cable management in this case is just almost non-existent. Um, this, the distance here, I mean, you can see, uh, is very very marginal and once you get back to where the motherboard tray is it grows or it shrinks to like that much between the back of the motherboard and the back and the back panel your only option for cable management really is to just shove everything under the uh, PSU shroud down there with your hard drives which um, does not bode well for having fans mounted here. Um, the more cable mess you have down there, the more, you know, that's an obstruction to good airflow. I'm using, oh, eh, and one more thing. Oh, and one more thing. So I'm using a modular power supply and I was really hoping that I would not need a peripherals cable for this build, but, and I swear this was not the case the last time I built in this chassis, but maybe that, you know, they swap back and forth. These two fans only have Molex connectors. They do not have three pin fan headers. What I had done in the past is I had actually cut and, and wire wrapped the Molex. I cut the Molex off and only used the three pin fan headers into a two in one um, off of the motherboard so they could be controlled. Uh, or at least monitored. You could see fan RPM signal on the motherboard monitoring or whatever, any kind of monitoring software that would monitor that voltage. But you cannot do these, do that with these. These are Molex only, so that means full speed only. So that's a little bit of a downgrade. I'm not really sure how much more it costs Zalman to put fans on here that are three pin as opposed to Molex. Um, I don't even, why do companies still make new Molex stuff? I mean, I understand making adapters for people who are trying to adapt old cases, but why are you making fans that are brand new in cases that are brand new for brand new PC builds ostensibly that have Molex adapters? That is, uh, in my opinion, subpar and, uh, and Zalman should fix it, honestly. But, you know... <laughs> I just noticed they call these Zalman, Qu Zalman quiet fans. They're mm, they're not loud, but they're definitely not what I would consider the quietest. I mean, they are definitely not a knock to a low low speed, for sure. Um, I mean, I'm not going to do any thermal testing. I've built a lot of PCs in the past in this chassis and had zero issues with um, heat um, heat management. And a lot of them have had, this is an RX 580, a lot of them have had, a lot of those builds have had RX 580s. That's a pretty hot and hefty card, but you know, get a good, one with a good cooler on it. And this is a Sapphire Nitro. Uh, it's a very robust cooler. You can see these big heat pipes in there. The stock, this is the, the AMD Wraith Spire version that has the copper round slug in the bottom of it. So that's a little bit quieter also. Um, the ones that don't have the copper slug, the fans just spins faster. That's the answer um, <laughs> to decontenting of, you know, or, you know, de decontenting is an automotive term, but I think it's an industry term in general where they just, you know, slowly trickle out um, upgrades or, you know, uh, good qualities of stuff. Anyway, so that's been a look at the Zalman S2. Let me know if you got any um, questions about the fan, about the uh, the case. I really do 
you know, what it's got going for it is a uh, really reasonable price, usable IO, IO uh, in and out uh, on the top here, comes with decent fans, it's got really good airflow, and it looks good. Um, and the build quality is fine. It's not phenomenal, but for 50 bucks, it's better than a, than you know a cardboard box. You know, well, a cardboard box doesn't cost 50 bucks, but it's definitely better. There there are definitely worse cases out here that you could um, put your computers into. So um, it does look good. This is a this is a you know kind of murdered out black and silver look to it. I like it. Um, yeah. So Zalman. S2. Got any questions? Hit me up. Uh, hit me up on my Discord. Hit me up on Facebook. I'll put links to all that in the description. I'll put a link to, you know, uh, Gamers Nexus <laughs> Zalman uh, revisit from a, a couple of years ago, just so you can maybe catch up on the history of the company. Although they would probably rather you not. But you know, it's still uh, it's a decent product for what you pay for it. You get, I think more than $50 worth of value. All right, I'm Mike, this is my channel, Solid State Alchemy. Like and subscribe if you like this content, if you want me to make more of this content. I mean, I'm gonna make more whether you like it or not, but I mean, if you, if you do like it, you should like the video. All right, I'm out.